too much radiation. We'll have to go around. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare set the ground rules of how a modern day shooter should feel and play. COD 4 was one of the most popular games of the Call of Duty franchise, and is considered one of the best games even to this day. COD 4 featured an action packed campaign with some of the most famous missions in the franchise's history. If you were to ask someone what their most memorable mission was, they would likely answer with one of three missions. Shock and awe, where you play as a US Marine named Sergeant Paul Jackson. This mission is most remembered for its nuke scene while flying in a helicopter. Mile High Club, where you play as an unknown SAS operative inside an airplane. This mission serves as the game's epilogue, and is most famous for its hostage rescue near the end of the mission. And finally, All Gillied Up. In All Gillied Up, you play as Price in the year 1996. In this mission, you follow the lead of Captain Macmillan, sneaking through the ruins of Chernobyl in order to reach a hotel. Upon reaching the hotel, you attempt an assassination on the Russian ultranationalist Imran Zakayev. If such a mission could be remembered so well a decade and a half later, it must have amazing gameplay. If you have never played Call of Duty 4 or it's remastered for that matter, here's a quick rundown of how you would normally play all gillied up. The mission starts you out south of an abandoned village. From there, you follow Macmillan, taking out two Russian patrol guards. After you snipe the guards, you head north towards a house. A guard will begin walking outside of the house, where you then snipe him. After sniping the guard, you head north towards an abandoned church. Macmillan will spot a guard at the top of the church. After sniping that guard, Macmillan will direct you north, where a lone guard is patrolling the church. After taking out both guards, Macmillan will move up and breach inside of the church. After exiting the church, a Russian helicopter will begin to fly overhead. Macmillan will direct you to lay prone in the grass in order to avoid being spotted. After the helicopter is gone, you head east across a large open field. As you cross the open field, a Russian convoy of tanks and troops begin to move towards your location. As you lay prone in the grass, you begin to crawl past the Russian tanks. After you are clear of the Russian convoy, you find yourself across from yet another Russian patrol. You move up towards a bulldozer and take out two soldiers to your north. Macmillan will then crawl into position. Once he is in position, you both take out a guard simultaneously. After you take out the Russian patrol, you go towards a bunch of abandoned shipping containers. A Russian soldier will then come around a corner. Macmillan tells you to stay low as he takes out the Russian guard. After Macmillan takes out the guard, you stealthily move past the shipping containers. Macmillan will then lead you inside a red container, slowly opening the door. Outside of the container is a massive Russian convoy. Macmillan tells you to wait until the coast is clear in order to move past a few of the guards. Once you are in between the two jeeps, Macmillan tells you to go prone and crawl underneath one of the trucks. You continue to follow Macmillan until you reach the end of the trucks. Upon reaching the end of the trucks, you wait for a group of Russian soldiers to walk by. After the Russian soldiers walk by, you sprint east towards another shipping container. Once the coast is clear, you head towards an apartment building. Macmillan spots a sniper at the top of the fire escape on the left side of the building. After you take out the sniper, you climb up through the window and exit the apartment from a destroyed balcony. You begin to head northeast and spot a few more apartment buildings. Macmillan spots a wild dog, but advises you to keep your distance. After moving past the wild dog, you follow Macmillan into yet another abandoned building. You slowly move through the abandoned building until you reach the outside. The hotel becomes visible as you drop down from a destroyed guardrail. Macmillan explains that the hotel will be used in order to see the exchange. Macmillan then runs into a small adjacent building, hitting the end level trigger and completing the mission. You may be asking yourself, how does a speedrunner get Macmillan to the end of the level as fast as they possibly can? The answer is, they don't. See, by using Noclip and flying yourself all the way to the end of the mission, you're able to hit the trigger yourself. So how do we get to the end of the level without Macmillan? This question is a bit more complicated. The first problem we encounter is the church door. Without Macmillan, we cannot get inside the church. Even if you do clear out all the enemies as quickly as you can, Macmillan hits a trigger outside of the church that spawns the helicopter as well as that Russian convoy. In order to avoid that 4 minute time loss, we have to go out of bounds. There's a small building to the east of the house that we need to get on top of in order to go out of bounds. By lining yourself up just right, you're able to sprint jump and mantle on top of the roof, getting out of bounds. This method of getting out of bounds was found quite recently in August of 2020 by a runner named Fred. An older method speedrunners used to use was called a crouch elevator. 
When you strafe into a precise position while crouched and attempt to stand up, the game gets confused. The game doesn't know if it should keep you crouched or stand you up. This makes the game glitch out and phases you upward above the object you are crouched under. By standing on top of the fence and performing a crouch elevator, you will then be on the roof, thus being out of bounds. Since mantling is way easier and less difficult to mess up, speedrunners use the mantle method more, especially console runners. Although there are a couple ways of getting on the roof that are theoretically faster, they are too difficult to pull off for the any percent run and only save a couple seconds at best. So we have successfully made it past the church without Macmillan. However, there is one more problem we need to solve. How do we get past the container door that Macmillan opens for us? We are going to have to find another out of bounds for this one as well. Since Macmillan hasn't hit the trigger to spawn the Russian convoy, we don't have to worry about the tank shooting at us. We can easily run past or kill the Russian patrol near the bulldozer, as well as the guard Macmillan kills on his own. If we run into the container Macmillan opens the door in, we hit the trigger to spawn the other convoy. This is obviously really dangerous, so if we want to go out of bounds, we do not want to hit this trigger. Now we need to find out how to get out of bounds. There are a couple ways of getting out of bounds here, however speedrunners only use one. By going up to this washing machine and jumping on top of it, we can then jump on top of the mattress. From there, we can strafe jump onto the container next to us. After we are on top of the container, we can then maneuver around the other containers, jumping over the container that we can't get past. We are also jumping over the spawn trigger, so no enemies from the convoy will spawn. Now we are able to freely run to the end. Since Macmillan did not hit the trigger to put the dog in its animation, the dog will begin to attack you. If you're having trouble running right past the dog, you can always kill it as well as the Russian soldier next to the tree. Everything up to this point has been used in both the COD 4 any percent world record and the individual level world record. This is the only part of the mission that differs from both speedruns. In any percent, you go through the building as normal, moving as fast as you can, hitting the end trigger. In the individual level world record, you instead lay prone in this window, move to the other side of the window, and hit a very precise sprint jump, clearing right over the wall. You then run all the way to the end, hitting the trigger as normal. In an any percent run, you should only be running through the building as normal, as doing the very precise sprint jump saves only about 6 seconds. This risk reward is not worth it at all in any percent, and should only be used while doing individual level speedruns. I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth video on how speedrunners skip all gillied up. I had a blast getting the gameplay, writing the script, editing the video, it was very fun these past two days. The background gameplay is a sped up version of Scappy's 224.811 all gillied up world record. This world record includes top of the line movement throughout the mission, as well as the wall skip at the end of the level. Special thanks to everyone in the COD speedrunning Discord server for giving feedback while I was creating this video. Links to the COD 4 any percent world record and Scappy's run will be in the description, as well as the COD speedrun Discord server. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know how I can improve on videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching, until next time.